Well, you join me today uh, aboard a vehicle with a great many seats. Um, wasted because I'm the only occupant. Uh, we are aboard a Volkswagen Caravelle T25. So it's the last of the rear engined um, transporters, effectively. Caravelle being the posh um, minibus, well, not minibus, um, people carrier version. It's a seven seater. Has a 2.1 litre engine, flat four water cooled engine at the back. Um, this one has an automatic gearbox. Um, so let's see how it goes. Good start. Smooth. Of course, it's much quieter than you expect because the engine's miles away. Um, nice big gear lever. Um, I think I'm going to have to start, judging by my sat nav, with a three point turn. Let's see how well this goes. Visibility. Thank you, Mr. BMW, for waiting. It's a nice first gear wine, and um, it's a 50 limit, so I can't do a 0 to 60 test, but I will have a go at a 0 to 50. I'll see what legs this thing's got once I can eventually get out of this junction. Cut, and welcome back. Here we go. Whoa. Stop accelerating, but no, we're gathering speed and that's 50. Hey, it's a very smooth gearbox. I mean, you can barely feel the changes. Got a bit of a squeak from the suspension on this side, so um, apologies for that. But apart from being a bit bouncy, so I'm just putting my orange juice away so it's no longer in the sun. What a pleasant old bus to drive. Remarkably, this is the first rear-engine Volkswagen bus that I've driven on the road. Uh, I once drove a bay window very briefly around the field. And, um, yeah, I can kind of see what the appeal is. You feel like you can sit here on top of the front wheel all day. Which is good, because I'm currently driving it all the way to Hertfordshire, from Oxfordshire. Uh, beautiful sunny Oxfordshire this morning, 50 mile an hour speeds of it everywhere. Um, and I'm going white water rafting because obviously that's what you do when you're a cool dude with your VW. Um, and uh, yeah, then I've got to go back up to Birmingham for the NEC Classic Motor Show. And the interesting thing is that then leaves me at the NEC with this vehicle and my 2CV, which is on display there. Not quite sure what we're doing about that. Maybe we'll find out in the course of this video. Uh, I've been promoting it on social media in the hope that someone might buy it. We shall see. Yeah, so far, initial impressions, quite encouraging, nice old thing. It's about 112 brake horsepower, so it's not a ridiculous amount of power, but it seems to be moving us along quite merrily. Interested to see what it's like at motorway speeds, because it's doing 3,000 revs by 50. Very easy to drive in traffic. You've got a big organ pedal style, very typical rear engine Volkswagen and indeed Porsche. Takes a bit of getting used to. Seem to have picked up a brake squeal. I'm getting waved at by a Mark II Golf there. It's been sitting for a couple of weeks. I'm hoping the brakes aren't too sticky. There we go, into a roundabout. You just kind of forget that there's, well, there goes my clothing. There's nothing in front of you at all, really, apart from a grill and a radiator. Comes around to have to overtake a tractor, that means employing the kick down. That's not too shabby, to be honest. Make sure to avoid becoming a bonnet mascot of that truck coming the other way. Well, it's good. We've got Ladybird crying, crawling across the dashboard. Lovely. I need to make a correction. Uh, it's not doing 3,000 revs at uh, 50 miles an hour, only if you're accelerating. Uh, we're actually doing about 2,400 revs at 50. We're doing 3,000 revs at 60. So the gearing's 
not just horrendous, but we still haven't reached the motorway, so we've still got to test that element. And the steering wheel does encourage a certain amount of push pull at the roundabout, which is quite nice. It's a nice big wheel. This is very unusual for a Caravel or Transport T25. Try and drive with power steering. And uh, nicely unobtrusive it is too. There's a bit of a carcophony of squeaks and rattle though. A particularly loud rattle from the armrest on this middle bench. Yeah, look at that squeak and get irritated. Well, now I'm barreling around the M25. I can say it'll definitely do motorway speed very comfortably. So we'll be doing 70, 75-ish. irritating is that the brake pedal is just a normal brake pedal um, usually automatics have a wide pedal which means you can do left foot braking um, this one does not appear to have that which is annoying because I'd like to do a bit of left foot braking it feels sporty even though this is the least sporty vehicle um, I've driven for some time I think I do like the first gear wide very low first gear, which is why you get that what attack when you set off. Well, this is it. We are nearing the end of another video. Let's make sure I don't reverse into a Ford Fiesta. And it really must be said, I do like the fact you can see around this vehicle so easily. Now I've got to drive it for um, pretty much two hours to get back up to Bromsgrove in Worcestershire. We'll see how I feel about it after that. This um, journey is taking a bit of a twist. It sounds to me like the engine's pinking. It's hard to tell when it's so far back. There's definitely a sort of metallic rattling sound when I'm accelerating up hills. Which you kind of need to do. to the second day of this test. That has been uh, a lot more exciting than I was expecting. Um, as I reported in the gloom last night, the dip beam refused to work and uh, also there was a side light out just for good measure. So I was driving along the M42 with one side light last night in the growing dusk. Um, I managed to get to the motorway junction of Bromsgrove um, but before that point, perhaps because I was pushing on a bit, it started overheating on the motorway. Um, thankfully, those two heaters from this ridiculously complicated um, switch gear meant a combination of that and easing off back down to 60, it rapidly cooled down again. But that was slightly worrying times. I suspect perhaps the radiator isn't in um, the best of health. Despite that, someone is coming to look at it with a view to buying it this morning, but I have to say the price is realistic. Uh, bearing in mind it's got a horrendous suspension squeak, and um, yeah. It, it's a good basis for further restoration, is how I describe it. 
So yeah, it doesn't seem to have suffered from its um, getting hot, thankfully. And um, here we are making progress again this morning in daylight. So the lack of main beam, or sorry, dip beam, is not such an issue. But yeah, I mean, I covered a good, oh, I don't know, 120 odd miles in this car yesterday. You can call it a car. Is it a car? Not really. And generally quite joyous. I have to say, I could definitely get used to this driving position. I could definitely see what the appeal of these is. So I think I'm going to conclude there because I've got a cold, my throat is really hurting and um, yeah, um, given last night's traumas I just want to get to the show and have a nice time and jump in my lovely old 2CV again. So thank you for watching, uh, subscribing is always an option if you fancy it, uh, don't forget to check out my blog at hubnut.org where you'll find general witcherings about stuff. Not so much recently because I've been really really dead busy but that's going to change a bit hoping to do more videos again and uh, yes I shall see you at some undisclosed point in the future farewell oh bright lights